Welcome to my yard. This is the back 60. It's a, a yard of about 60 by 60 feet. We've been here about 20 years. We raised kids in this yard. They've played, they've had fun. We've had a little bit of a garden, not much, and uh, we're ready to do the right thing. Um, I first thought I wanted to just have it all garden. I uh, got invited by a couple of friends to get together this thing we're calling Grow Local for the Planet. And all of my visions have changed with some wonderful input from friends. And my vision is now uh, something I feel really, really good about. And we're going to be taking this back to uh, nature and harmony and uh, mindful of migration and birds paths and mindful of native trees and mindful of uh, other kinds of um, diversity. Hi. Uh, my name is Dimitra Tsekras, and I am Gardens by Dimitra, which basically means I design and install beautiful gardens for outdoor living in Winchester and Arlington and all around. And I've been doing this for 15, 16 years, but I grew up gardening because my mom is a fantastic gardener. So I've really been gardening my whole life. Um, I am going to be talking about two big, big items today. First, we're going to talk about invasives and how to get rid of them. And that's all about natives and non-natives and good plants and bad plants, which is very judgy, but we're going to have to deal with that. And then the second thing we're going to talk about is what is appropriate to do right now in your garden? Because we're all dying to get out there, especially after last week when it warmed up, it's going to warm up again. And I'm going to give you some pretty strong advice about what not to do, but also what you can do. So. We'll get started. The first plant we're gonna look at is this, what I call a pricker bush, which is a barberry. And many of you know them, They're, they've been planted as hedges to keep kids out of yards for decades and decades. They're a plant that you will know because if you ever touch it without realizing, you're gonna get really hurt because the thorn is quite remarkable. And they, some of them have red leaves and some have green, and they all make little berries, and which the birds do eat, and then they distribute widely. It's not native, meaning it didn't grow up here in this part of New England. It doesn't offer a good, good source of food for birds, and it doesn't offer anything for bugs. It's illegal to sell them at nurseries in New England. Um, they're that bad. So this is a plant, if you have it, that should really come out of the ground. If you really like it and you want to keep it, that's understandable, but what you might want to ask yourself is, if I took this out, what could I plant instead that would make sense, not only for sort of the size and the shape of the garden that you're, that you're working with, but also for what kind of creatures are you trying to attract to your garden, which I hope you're attracting songbirds and the like. This plant could come out, and because this is pretty much full sun, you could plant almost anything here. And you could plant a, a native hypericum, which would have beautiful yellow flowers and then gorgeous red berries. You could plant anything. Uh, you could plant blueberries if you wanted right here. So you'll understand it's very hard to kill. I like to wrap a big piece of burlap around it, tie it up nice and tight so I don't get hurt. I always wear long sleeves. And then I take a sawzall, which is a, a tool you can use. You can get a blade that can handle going into dirt. And I just get at the roots as best I can, and I get it out. If it's a new plant, you can dig it out, of course. And then you don't give it to a friend. You don't send it down the street to a neighbor you dispose of it properly. It can be composted, get rid of it. Very bad plant. Now we're gonna move on. Uh, so here we are at the second plant I wanna introduce you to today. Most of you know it. It's called burning bush. It's a kind of euonymus. It's a beautiful plant four or five days of the year when it turns bright red. Otherwise, it's just sort of a big green mound it's very invasive, it's, Ill, it's illegal to buy and sell it, and it's become a scourge in areas where um, it has infested woods and taken over. And what it is very good at doing is nudging out native plants 
that we really need in order to feed our songbirds. So even though birds do distribute these seeds, they do eat the berries, it is not a good source of nutrition for them. So if you remove it from your landscape, you're ultimately doing the right thing, not the wrong thing for the birds. So burning bush, you can tell it's got sort of a, a stripy look to it. Um, and like I said, it turns bright red. Underneath, you'll see the soil if you really get in there when you're removing it, which I hope you will all do. You'll see that the soil is really dry and it almost feels dead. That's because it is. It really does a number on the soil. It takes a lot of moisture into it. To remove it is pretty straightforward, although the roots, if it's an older plant, the roots go deep. So you need a sawzall. You just cut it and then you get in there and you just dig out as many of the roots as you can. It is a persistent plant. You, if you don't get all of the root, it will come back and you just have to keep after it until you've killed it. And this yard is particularly infested with another really hateful invasive plant. If you look up into this sort of looming arborvitae hedge, you will see a big fat robin, who's very cute, but you'll also see a tangle of sticks. And if you look closely, you'll see a lot of red berries. These berries are particularly beautiful in the fall. A lot of people love to take them and decorate their houses with them, which is illegal. That's Asian bittersweet. It's, um, it was introduced a long time ago because it was a pretty vine. And what it does is it grows extremely quickly. Birds do eat the berries, but generally not because it doesn't have, um, it doesn't have the right fat content or the sugar content that berries, that birds need, our songbirds need when these are ripe. So that's why you see so many of them still persisting on the vine and you see so many of them on the ground, which is of course future plants. These vines are particularly bad because they can grow up a full, a full grown real tree, like an oak tree, and get up into the canopy. When it covers the canopy of a tree, it will kill it within two years because it denies it the sunlight that it needs to live. People think, oh, but they're pretty. Well, they're really not pretty because they really do kill very important plants like trees and shrubs. So getting rid of them is number one priority to do, and now is a really good time to do it. Although you'll never get rid of them in the first go. Your main goal is of course to cut the vine so that anything above where you cut will die. But anything below that's still in the ground, you have to get out of the ground. Meanwhile, the stuff that's looming up above your head, you can very carefully yank some of it down. But if your trees are compromised, and these are because these are very mature vines that have been wreaking havoc in this yard for many, many years, I wouldn't pull because I don't want to get killed by something falling on my head. So you do really have to be careful. In time, if you are persistent, you can get rid of the bittersweet. Now I want to talk about American bittersweet. There is a native bittersweet. It is also very pretty, but do not think that it's a good plant to put in your yard because what's happening is they're hybridizing. So the Asian and the American bittersweet are creating a new form and they just do such damage. So protect your trees and your shrubs and get rid of this hateful vine. Okay, so the next plant we're gonna talk about that you might have in your yard or that you've probably, if you have a down yonder, it's probably down there, is this wild rose. And it is not a precious rose that can be, you know, maintained. It's a wild brambly rose that's highly invasive. You'll know it this time of year, it's got those bright green sticks and it's very prickly and it's a real bramble. You will undoubtedly have rabbits living under it, birds living in it, and you think, but it's good for them. Well, except that it will kill anything that's near it, underneath it, next to it, because it will smother it. And 
Uh, it's not doing, it's, it is offering a place for those creatures to live, but other plants that are native can do the same thing and offer more as well. So that's a plant that needs to go. Uh, again, long sleeves and wrap it tight, rope it up and dig it out as best you can. It's very persistent. You're going to be chasing that one for a while also. It's another plant if you can't dig out the root, you might want to just paint the root with Roundup to kill it so that you can move on. Uh, so I talked before about Roundup um, and there's a lot of different kinds of Roundup. Some of it is to kill grass. Um, don't use Roundup to kill grass. Roundup is being used by home gardeners more than our farmers are using it in their fields now. Roundup is an herbicide. It kills plants. It'll also kill you. It'll, you know, I mean, it, that's just true. So don't use it unless you really need to. And when you do, use it as, as surgically as possible. I could come out here in the spring when all this vine is pushing green and I could just spray it all over the place and that would kill the plant. But it would also kill every other plant it touches. So there's no reason to do that. You just work a little smarter with it. But if you do choose to use it, um, that's, you know, that's how. I literally screw the top off, put a paintbrush in and I paint stumps. Or, and you never use it on a windy day, right? It's common sense. Use it on a still day and use it as carefully as you can. And then, you know, if, you're, if you do not ever want to use it, you don't have to. Just keep denying the plant sunlight. Just keep denying it and eventually you'll kill it. Now, I also want to talk about um, this time of year. People are itching to get out into their garden and do a spring cleanup. We use that term, we use it in the fall. Fall cleanup and spring cleanup. And it usually involves very loud blowers, armies of people showing up, taking away every single leaf that has managed to stay on the property over the winter. It is absolutely important not to do anything like that this time of year. Underneath the leaves are overwintering bugs, and the bugs are good. And the bugs become butterflies and they become damselflies and little tiny pollinator wasps and good pollinator bees are native bugs. Songbirds, our native songbirds, rely on those bugs to feed their babies. They don't feed them seeds, it's not baby food. So if you take away all those leaves in the fall and then certainly if you take the rest of them away now, you take away an entire generation of good bugs. And that really shows. It shows in our landscapes not uh, being as abundant, not fruiting as much. We need those pollinators, we need those bugs, and we need the songbirds. So I beg you not to get out there with blowers, not even with rakes yet. It's best to get rid of your invasives this time of year. You can do your winter pruning. It's time to prune a grapevine. It's time to cut back your raspberries, your fruit trees, etc. But wait until it's warmed up. It should be 50 degrees every day for a week. And then if you can possibly bear it, wait one week more. And then get out there gently with rakes. Otherwise, if you're blowing, you're blowing like little baby toads out. Don't do that. Just rake as best you can. And then compost the leaves. But remember that leaves are mulch. It costs you zero dollars to get that mulch. And if you leave as many of them as you can in a shrub and tree hedgerow, for instance, it will, they'll break down and they'll feed the soil. Which means you don't have to worry quite so much about the health of your plants. So um, you'll hear that a lot from me. If you're part of this group, you'll hear about fall cleanups and spring cleanups. Um, it's really good to be a lazy gardener. Enjoy it.